Birds are really weird in so many ways. They have such a short, stubby tail, I mean, even shorter than in a mammal. They have this really crouched, kind of zigzag-legged posture. Of course they can fly. Their body form is, is bizarre compared to almost anything else living. So I really like the question of, well, how did they get to be that way? For me, it's, it's a question of bipedality. I'm interested in uh, things walking on two legs, which, I mean, in the modern world is basically limited to us and birds. When humans walk around, we tend to walk around on fairly straight legs. Our legs act uh, somewhat like a column. So they support our weight um, using mainly the bones. It's a fairly straight line from our center of mass, the average position of uh, our body weight straight down the leg. Whereas when birds stand, they have very bent legs, like these very zigzag legs, which mechanically is slightly counterintuitive because it takes a lot more muscular effort to stand like that. All right, time to see the birds. Yeah, you know, check out the posture of the leg is really interesting that the knee is there and then we go down to the ankle and of course the toes. So it's a very crouched posture with the, uh, especially the hip and the knee very bent. The thigh almost horizontal like this. So I got a posture like that. The question we were interested in is how did birds get like this? And we decided to look at the ancestors of birds to try and get an answer to this question. So we decided to look at dinosaurs. One of the best fossil records of any vertebrate group is the dinosaur lineage. And that shows how birds got the way they are today. We just need to put it together in a computer and track the evolution of fossils we know, and that allows us to reconstruct how body form and therefore posture evolved. So once you have your digitized uh, dinosaur skeleton, this is a tyrannosaur here, um, you can then start to what we call shrink wrap it, so start to place simple geometry around the body, which we do by just fitting these very simple hoop-like shapes around it. And from this, we can expand it into a volumetric model. And from this, it's relatively simple to calculate what we call the mass properties, that is the weight and the position of the center of mass of this entire complex shape. So in our models, we chose animals that were represented by good skeletons, that were three-dimensionally preserved pretty well, and that represented the key changes in the anatomy of dinosaurs, from big, heavy-tailed, two-legged dinosaurs like T-Rex, to later, kind of short-tailed or more rod-like tailed, larger, four-limbed animals like Archaeopteryx and Velociraptor. <laughs> so cold. The crocodile really nicely represents the body form that dinosaurs ultimately evolved from. The common ancestor of crocodiles, birds, and extinct dinosaurs was, all, was rather like a crocodile in many ways in, in its general shape. So we look at the crocodile, huge muscular tail here. It's very much like what dinosaurs started off with early in their evolution. And short little forelimbs, slightly larger, more muscular hind limbs, nice big head full of teeth. Uh, very different kind of body form than a bird, uh, like this frozen pheasant we have here, or like uh, the turkeys uh, that we have uh, around our lab or the emus. We thought, just like everyone else, that as dinosaur tails shortened and became lighter, the center of mass moved forward, and that was the conventional story. Well, our computer modeling that uh, Vivian and others did showed that the center of mass of dinosaurs did move forwards toward the head during their evolution, but it wasn't really the tail that drove that change of center of mass during their evolution, was it, Viv? Well, no, according to our results, there's a stronger association between the development of large forearms, I mean, the things that eventually become the wings of birds, and that it was this, this trend towards larger arms that was driving the center of mass forwards more than the tail. And that change of center of mass forwards would have required the animals 
to stand in a more and more crouched posture. So going from a straight-legged kind of posture, like in humans almost, yeah. to a more crouched posture, which birds have today. Something more and more bird-like. The obvious question when dealing with anything about the evolution of locomotion in birds is, is this associated with flight? And our results uh, suggest that, in a way, yes. If you have these very large forearms for flying, then because of the effect on the position of the center of mass, this will inevitably change how your hind limbs work, so what your hind limb posture is. But this is something that starts a lot earlier than flight. So um, a lot of non-flying dinosaurs, particularly the, the bird-like dinosaurs, like Velociraptor and its relatives, had very long arms, which were presumably for something like prey manipulation or something like this. And this, um, it's this development of long arms that kind of kick-started the the shift towards crouch posture, which was then inherited by flying animals and became sort of emphasized as the forearms got even larger to work as wings. So I think that's, that's really interesting, that there's a link between the way the hind legs work, the way the animal stands and moves, but also mechanically through the physics of movement, the changes of the center of mass would have influenced the way the animals flew and ultimately allowed, perhaps, flight to evolve.